it's April and with everything either bursting into leaf or bursting into flower, I'm really excited to show you some of the just gorgeous things that are in my garden right now. So it's time for a garden tour, but it's gonna be a garden tour with a difference. Hey everyone, how's it going and welcome back. Over the last few years, I've shown you around my garden countless times in garden tours, whether it's in spring, summer, autumn, and even winter. But I realized it's always from this point of view, you behind the camera, me standing here, and the garden behind me. We are really fortunate that the garden we have is large and it's split into really nice distinct areas, but I know that that can make it a little bit difficult and tricky to imagine exactly where everything is. So what if you could see exactly what it's like to be in the garden from my point of view, to walk around and to experience it? Well, that is what we're gonna do today. So let's have a walk around and let's have a look at some of the really lovely things in the garden this spring. When you come in through our front gates, you have two gardens at the front, the main front garden, and on the other side of our driveway, hidden behind this hedge, is our secret garden. So let's have a look there first. It really is a little bit of a squeeze to get into the secret garden, but it's totally worth it, because in here is just the most lovely secluded space with lovely mature trees and some really beautiful shrubs. So let's have a look straight away at this, our Magnolia stellata. This has just been flowering its heart out for the last month or so, and you can see that now it's coming into leaf, but there is the remains of still some really lovely white blossoms. This is really small. It's only about three foot high, but it is just glorious and I love it. It was planted by the previous owners and I'm very glad to have it. In the secret garden, we also have this really quite large and mature Acer. The color all year round is beautiful. I love it in the winter when the leaves are off it and you can see the form of all of the branches. But just now, when the leaves are starting to open and you can still see the sky through it, I think it's really beautiful. And I know that come autumn, this thing is going to be ablaze with colour. The secret garden is absolutely chock-a-block with lovely mature trees and shrubs, like this big Robinia pseudoacacia, where you can see the form of all of the twigs and branches because the leaves have come off it. But it's not only the big things that are worth a look, the little small plants are definitely worth a look too. Like this, this lovely little fern that's just starting to unfold for spring. Clumps and clumps of aquilegia that you can see haven't started flowering yet, but are gonna be flowering soon. And the return of these, the Japanese anemones, I absolutely love them. But that's the secret garden. Let's go round and have a look at the front garden. Back across the driveway and it brings us into our front garden. And you'll have seen this shot so many times before when I do my garden tour videos. But rather than simply me standing in front of the camera and showing you it at a distance, let's go and have a much closer look at some of the beautiful things that we have. Right now, our wedding cake tree is really bursting into leaf and the colour is something special. It's already a variegated plant, so it's got lovely white and green markings to each leaf. But at this time of year, when the leaves are just starting to open, they are an almost creamy yellow kind of green and the colour just absolutely sings out and it looks really striking. Behind are three huge silver birches that are tucked into the very corner of the front garden next to our gates. These are still bare, they haven't come into leaf, but it means that you can enjoy that really bright white bark and you can see just how tall these are. They're about 30 foot high. They're absolutely massive. But nestled below them, I want to show you one really special little plant. This little plant is just something special. I have to confess, I didn't know exactly what it was initially because 
I didn't plant it myself, it was already here. But what it is, is a white and pink saxifrage. And at this time of year, it flowers without fail every time. From this corner behind the wedding cake tree, you can see all of the other trees that we have. We've got three maples in the very corner that again, haven't come into leaf yet, but we do have one very large purple leafed maple that although it's not in leaf, is actually starting to flower. Underneath the maple trees, we have a mixture of perennials like Echinops and my newly planted Verbena binariensis, and soon to be planted in there, lots of grasses. But in the front garden, the star of the show at the moment has to be this. This is the ornamental crab apple. It is huge, it's really mature. And as well as the beautiful fruits in the autumn, at this time of year, it is covered with pinky white flowers. But those flowers before they open are really in tightly encased in dark pink buds. Just to have a look at this. It is absolutely stunning, and I will quite happily look at this for ages. So you can see as I pan round, that's really the layout of our front garden. Quite simple, but it's a really lovely space. But we need to keep moving, and we're going to go past the crab apple, down the western side of our garden, to head down towards the back garden. What I think is really lovely about this garden is we actually have on one side this little simple strip of grass that takes you down to the back garden. But what it does is it opens up this really lovely glimpse down towards the pond and down towards our absolutely huge cedar tree. So let's head down that way and have a look. And once you get down to the back garden, here is the view. And this will show you really clearly where everything is in the back garden. So what we have is we have a long strip of grass, the long lawn, I suppose, we've never given it a name. Down towards the corner, you can see that there's a big beech hedge that runs the length of the back garden. That's where the veg garden is, tucked behind that. We have the trees for the apple orchard. And then as we continue round, we've got the pond underneath the cypress tree. But before we look at any of that, I want to show you something that's at the far end of the garden, and it's over there. It's the big orange Berberus. Just check this out. This is a really massive specimen of an orange Berberus. Now, this is about 12 or 14 feet high and at least the same across. Now, that's not entirely by design. That's because I haven't pruned it in several years, but it is really majestic. It's a plant that I don't like most of the year when it's only in green because the leaves are really spiky and not particularly attractive. But at this time of year, when it is just dripping with those orange flowers, it looks incredible. And it's fantastic for early pollinators. But let's keep moving and let's see what else there is in the garden. From here, we can walk down the lawn and go and have a look at the orchard and what I've planted there. I really love this time of year in the orchard because the leaves are only just starting to break on the apple trees. So still lots of dappled light comes through and everything is looking really fresh. What I've been doing over the last couple of years is planting each of these beds up as orchard beds. Here is a mixture of foxgloves, daffodils, which have now passed and other spring bulbs, and it sweeps on down towards the pond. Then, if you remember a couple of years ago, I made an episode all about planting up a specific orchard bed that I created, and that's down there, and we're going to have a look at that in a minute. And then closer in, we have the no-mo patch, which, as you can see, has little yellow celandines coming up, and more spring bulbs, and of course, more foxgloves. But let's go and have a closer look at that orchard bed. This orchard bed that I created is only about 18 months old now, but I think it's already starting to look quite nice. It is, I think, a little bit sparse, but there's more stuff that can go in that's going to really make it fill out. But what's here at the moment, particularly because it's tuned towards spring, just looks lovely at the moment. I've got blue forget-me-nots, 
Fritillaria meleagris, the snake's head fritillary, tulip, queen of night, that are all just starting to open. So, so close. They look lovely. And more foxgloves. It's just a really nice area. And I think it adds a little bit more interest to what's under the trees here. And then if we look across, as I pan across, you can see all the other plants that I've got here on the other side. So these are the remains of the spring bulbs. We've got some nice little bluebells and more foxgloves. <laughs> There's a theme. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk over this way because that takes us to the pond. When it comes to the pond, normally you would see me kneeling next to it but I thought I would show you from a different angle. This is from behind the rockery, and please be kind to me. I know that there does need to be quite a bit of weeding. There's a lot of Herb Robert, and there are a few thistles in the rockery, but at the same time, it's looking really nice. It's planted up in an intentional way to look quite wild, so I have a mixture of, yep, you guessed it, foxgloves, but I also have a whole mixture of nice ferns, I've got some little primulas, more forget-me-nots, and also some aquilegia and other nice things that are just going to give a little hit of colour now and then. And then in the pond itself, lots and lots of marsh marigold. I love that hit of yellow, and particularly because the hit of yellow comes out at the same time as the daffodils. Now, Onwards, because we have seen all of the orchard and the pond. And if you were in the orchard and you wanted to go to the veg garden, you'd head across to the other side. And to do that, we come through the orchard like this and you get the first glimpse in between the beach hedge of the veg garden. So let's go and have a sneaky look. Now, here, is the veg garden at the moment, and I'm only gonna show you a small bit of it, and that's because I'm going to do a dedicated veg garden episode. But you can see that even though it's early spring, we've got loads of things going on. I've put in some arches that we're gonna come back to. They're gonna be fantastic this year. In these beds, we've got a whole bed of garlic. We have a bed of onions. As you can see, the asparagus beds have now been fully weeded and cleared out of the blackberries and the raspberries. If you didn't see the backstory behind that, I'll link the video up above. And then coming closer in towards the centre of the vegetable garden, we've got my broad beans, winter sown broad beans, and also spring sown broad beans. You can see the difference in their growth. And then some little catch crops that I've started. I've got some radishes and some turnips, but everything in the veg garden is still really productive, which is lovely. Just here, I still have the remains of my carrots that have been overwintering. They're gonna get pulled up and also a nice little crop of guardsman spring onions. This view here will hopefully also explain the layout better for you. We're now standing at the eastern end of our garden and looking across the width of the garden, down through the beach hedge, out of the veg garden, through the orchard and right down to the pond at the end. We're gonna go back through this way because I want to show you something that I don't think you've seen before. And what we do is we come out to the orchard, but we're gonna turn left and go towards the end of the garden. And it's this bed here that's currently in shade. We've come out of the veg garden and now we're right down at the very back of the garden, looking back up towards the house, towards the north. And you can see down in the very far corner on the left, that's where we came down from the front garden. We've got the pond, the orchard, and the veg garden off to the right behind the beach hedge but something that I've realized I've never shown before is this bed, which sits at the very end. Now, this didn't really have very much going on when we moved in. It has, a, I suppose, a conifer tree, and that's about it. But last year, my mum and I planted it up with a whole selection of beautiful, dark irises. When these flower in a month or two, these are gonna have really lovely, dark purple, almost black flowers. And I have filled this bed with clumps of them. Now again, please be kind because I can see weeds. 
and you'll notice that some of them are also getting smothered by clumps of forget-me-nots. But those little blue flowers mean that I don't have the heart to pull them out yet, but they'll be coming out soon. And then we can enjoy the flowers in this bed once they really get going. Our garden is about an acre, but it's a really long, thin acre, and it tapers towards a point on the eastern side of it. And in that point is where our polytunnel is, tucked behind the beach hedge, and then further round behind, there is what I'm going to nicely describe as our compost area. But yes, it's a little bit of a mess, so that's all you're going to get to see of that. So that's it. That is my garden this spring. I really hope you've enjoyed the garden tour, and particularly I hope that you've enjoyed being able to just quietly walk around with me and enjoy what the garden has to offer from my point of view, because I really do love sharing this place with you. If, however, you're still in the mood for some more gardening inspiration or just some really nice garden videos, can I recommend one or two of these videos here? Check them out because I think that you're gonna love them. And as ever, until next time, see you later.